Welcome everyone to this, to this presentation with the title Trustworthy AI on Network Operations. We are Alexander Sniku and Svarup Mohalik, researchers from Ericsson Research. Ericsson Research is an organization within Ericsson. We are working towards bringing new technologies in our networks. Here, you can take a brief look to the technologies we are working with. 6G journey has just started, where we are also continuing to evolve the 5G standards. 5G and beyond innovations on the telecom platform will happen in gaming, autonomous driving and manufacturing. Everything from the data center to the smallest of devices will become one universal compute fabric. As networks become intelligent platforms for innovation, future network security will become key to establishing trustworthiness across future societies. Future autonomous networks will deliver the speed, the scalability and the zero human touch. In the future, billions of devices will connect intelligent societies and industry simultaneously. Within Ericsson Research, we are a team that we are working towards trustworthy AI for network operations. Me and Svaru belong to this team. A small introduction for the, this technology area to make sure that we are all aligned. The three main objectives that our team has is to build AI systems that are trustworthy by design. And by design, we mean to be safe, robust, reliable, explainable, and sustainable. We would like to demonstrate trustworthy AI technologies in multiple networks and use cases such as run control, core network, transport network, and orchestration and management layers. And finally, we would like to develop trustworthy AI solutions that leverage both machine learning and machine reasoning techniques. Within Trustworthy AI, we have different activities we're working on and we can contribute both in theoretical as well as applied research. Some of the activities are depicted here. Symbolic reinforcement learning, formal verification of neural networks and explainable AI. For the rest of the session, we will take a deeper dive on these three activities. A disclaimer here is that some of the views of these topics of this presentation, it's the presenter's views and they are not the company's views, so they are not Ericsson's views. Symbolic reinforcement learning. We know that reinforcement learning is the branch of machine learning that deals with the problem of controlling a dynamical system over uncertainty over time. And we would like to control the system in order to optimize the performance usually given by reward functions. But sometimes it's in different applications, we want to impose the dynamical system with more complex specifications, which is generally difficult to be done just by uh, reward engineering. So the question that arises here is how this complex specification can be assigned or imposed to the system in an automatic way. Symbolic reinforcement learning is the field that bridges these two worlds, the world of reinforcement learning and the world of formal methods in order to provide guarantees and explanations of how can we control the dynamical system for satisfaction or not of the high level task. Some background material in order to understand the framework. We start with the modeling of the system, which is a transition system, is a compact mathematical formalism that has states, actions, transition relation, atomic proposition and labeling function. This is a general model that can model all the dynamical systems. If we don't have exactly the model in the transition system, we can perform abstraction techniques. Then, in order to be able to express properties on the transition system, we have linear temporal logic, which is also a compact way of defining properties over dynamical systems. The grammar of the linear temporal logic is negation, conjunction, disjunction operators, next operator, and until operator. With these modules, we can express any possible task over uh, state and uh, time constraints. Then the property is translated into an equivalent automaton. So by having the model of the system as a transition system and by having also the input formula, then we can perform model checking and graph techniques and we can derive plan that satisfy the system and we can also block uh, traces that violate the property. That was the background and dynamical systems and formal methods. So now, reinforcement learning, as we know, it's a powerful technique for dealing with optimal decision of dynamic agents that interact in uncertain environments. 
a compact, a compact representation of it is this modeling where an agent is applying an action to the environment, receives a reward and transits to the next state. The idea is how can we, how can we design optimal a sequence of actions such that the accumulated reward is maximized over time. A bit deeper, a rigorous form of a reinforcement learning model is the Markov decision problem process, which is a tuple that has state actions, transition probability matrix, which is unknown, and reward functions. Formally, the goal is to design a policy that states which actions should be taken in order to maximize this expected value. We have many algorithms in practice for solving this problem, such as Q-learning, DQN, A3C, etc. So here comes the framework of symbolic reinforcement learning. By training a reinforcement learning agent and having some experience replay memory, we can start learning the probabilities of a Markov's decision process. Then we have the model of the system. But this is trained only for a reward maximization. If we want also to impose complex tasks, then we translate the LTL formula to an automaton and then we perform model checking on the product of the LTL and the MTP. We match these two and then we can have a plan of the system and we can, so we can learn a policy that satisfies the task or we can use shield approaches, safety shield approaches in order to block actions that violate the property. This is the theoretical framework and we can proceed to see how this can be applied in a practical scenario which arises in the telecom setting, since telecom is the basic product of our company. So we have a wireless mobile network, which typically looks like this. We have a geographical area that is partitioned over cells. Then we have some radio bench stations, you can think as the antennas that we know, which are towers with antennas. These antennas can provide connectivity to any devices. If we zoom to each of the antennas of the base station, we can see that the antenna can be tilted with an angle at time instance t. This is required because according to how the traffic evolves, we need to control the tilt in order to optimize a set of key performance indicators such as capacity, signal quality, coverage and some others. Optimizing these parameters typically leads to better quality of experience. So the problem here is how to control these antennas and make a plan in order to keep the KPI in predefined bounds. We can have a modeling of the system as a Markov decision process with state actions and rewards. And then by applying symbolic uh, reinforcement learning, we can have a, a framework that we can optimize over time and we can have actions that leads to the satisfaction of the task. So quality of experience is improved and we can also block actions that violate any degradation of the KPIs. Uh, a deeper dive on this approach. We start with some uh, offline data sets. We, uh, we have network simulators that we um, they can model the reality. We can also have uh, online data through uh, operators and then we have uh, experience replay tuples in the form of state action reward next state. Then we can build the Markov decision process which is an abstracted NTP and then what we do is we take the input intent, which is translated to an automata, and then we construct the product automata between the MDP and the uh, LTL automaton. And then we can have big graph, which is the product construction, in which we perform graph techniques and we can have traces that satisfy or violate the task. It might be the case that all traces are unsatisfied. So then we can modify and relax the input specification. Then we have a shield approach in which one we choose which of the actions we want to be applied to the network. This was the technical presentation of this part. Uh, we have some references here. It's material that we used to create these slides and also it's our personal work that it has been submitted and accepted to uh, both AI, top AI and uh, telecom conferences. So if you have uh, more questions regarding to this idea, feel free to ping us or uh, take a look in these uh, papers that we have published. 
now over to Spiral for the next part, which is the formal verification of neural networks. Hi, I will now talk about the need and techniques for testing the robustness of ML models. The large and complex telecom systems are expected to be a mix of classical and AI-based software. This could be uh, including ML models for de detection, prediction of events, and recommendation of corrective actions. However, at the end of the development phase, AI-based software is just software and hence must be subjected to rigorous testing and verification. Only that, because of the nature of the AI-based models, there are different challenges and hence they need different techniques to be applied. Apart from the standard black box techniques that can be leveraged from classical software engineering, new techniques have been proposed in the lines of adversarial testing, coverage-based testing, and formal verification. A very readable blog from DeepMind gives an introduction to some of these topics. For adversarial uh, test generation, one tries to break the system by exploring changes to the input that may result in unexpected outputs. The line of research on generative adversarial networks or GANs propounded by Ian Goodfellow and team uh, is the basis of this. On the other hand, one can use derivative-free methods to uh, generate and guide inputs in a property-driven way to violate the specifications. While these do not guarantee the absence of uh, bugs, they can give very good statistical guarantees on the goodness of the models. The architecture and the de development paradigm of uh, neural network models has given way uh, to a number of new coverage definitions uh, to the extent these definitions are being considered for standardization of NN testing. There are a number of tools available to uh, address this coverage-based test generation. While testing gives certain uh, quality guarantees for uh, safety critical applications, the ML models must have stronger uh, guarantees of correctness formal verification can uh, fill this gap. In formal verification, the ML model and uh, formal specification is input to a model checker, uh, which either outputs yes when the specification holds for all inputs, or it outputs no when the specification is violated for certain input. In this case, the culprit input and the corresponding output uh, are produced as counterexamples to help in debugging. One can look at formal verification as exhaustive testing, but done very cleverly. One critical input for formal verification is formal specification of desired properties. Uh, examples, output range, range analysis, uh, robustness in general, local and global, Boolean combination of uh, arithmetic uh, relational formula over inputs and outputs, etc. Formal verification of neural networks is seeing many different approaches such as MILP based, SAT modular theory based and manipulation of geometric region propagations. Uh, the main challenges are the scale, the number of neurons and of course the handling of nonlinear activation functions. So uh, the research in formal verification is picking very uh, rapidly, as is evident from the conferences and workshops in this area, and also the large number of tools that are already available. For a list of these tools, you can refer to the uh, web pages of VNN Comp, uh, the competition of verification of uh, uh, neural networks. I will now talk about explainability of AI-based models, which is essentially essential to build trust in these models that seems to have been materialized uh, magically from data. The trust issue is really critical because of the perfectly valid reasons uh, coming from negative examples such as the Tesla accident, but also from the very well-known relation between model quality and data bias. Actually, even for uh, machine reasoning models that are uh, symbolic in nature, there is a need for extracting the right and relevant artifacts to um, explain the decisions of the models and then act accordingly. 
maybe uh, that is useful for debugging the models, data, or uh, change the specifications, etc. Explanations in uh, explainability in ML is very well known. Uh, tools like uh, Lime, Sharp, LE5, etc., they produce the relative uh, contribution of input features towards the outputs globally or locally, which can serve as explanation of the uh, uh, for the outputs. Many uh, natural problems analogous to resource allocation problems can be uh, formulated using SAT-SMT constraints and solved using efficient SMT or SAT solvers. Uh, one can um, uh, then ask for various kinds of explanations regarding the solution. The query may be uh, attributive, like what is the set of relevant facts and rules that lead uh, uh, to the solution or contrastive questions like what is this solution and uh, why not some other solution? Why the observed fact is different from the expected one? All this could be cast as analysis of inconsistencies and producing the onset core as the explanation artifact. In knowledge-based reasoning, supporting reasoning with inconsistency, one nice formalism is based on argumentation frameworks. In the simplest formulation, it is represented as a graph with arguments as nodes and an attack relation joining uh, the, uh, some nodes, denoting a counter argument. For example, in the graph uh, shown here, the node A stands for the latency uh, SLA or the service level agreement met. This is attacked by predictor violation. That is, if the violation is predicted, then latency SLA cannot be met. There are two solutions that can address violation, but one of them, D, is not approved by the uh, operator. The methods that and uh, collect an acceptable no set of nodes which show how the final decision or node is supported by the other, other nodes. Argumentation framework can be used to give a supporting argument for a decision. However, it can also be used to contrast other arguments traversing uh, uh, through the other paths that were overridden or even finding possible changes to the graph to make another decision possible. In many automatic control uh, to set the right configuration to the system to take care of changing environments and conditions of the network, uh, reinforcement learning is emerging as an approach of choice because of the complexity of the underlying algorithms and in many cases because of the approximation through the DNNs, stakeholders need explanations to query such as uh, what does uh, the policy seek to achieve in which states an action is recommended. Why was an action A and not an action B that was recommended in a given state, etc. Depending upon the queries, the artifacts produced for explanation may be very different. For example, for attributive queries, some type of summarization techniques are used, whereas for uh, contrastive queries or unsolvability, one needs to produce the elements that prevent the policy to achieve certain expected level of rewards or to stay within safe boundaries, etc. Explainable RL or XRL is very, very hot field now. Looking at the challenges and the possible solutions, the natural question is what are the new challenges to implement the solutions in uh, telecom networks? One must notice two major differences in the classical versus AI ML based software. Classical software de development is mostly manual starting from the specifications, but AML models are generated from data or knowledge. Moreover, when online update is allowed, ML models change during deployment, which is not the case with classical software. Beyond this, deployment-wise, there is no difference between ML models and classical software. Hence, the same lifecycle steps that are applied to Classical software are also applicable to ML model software, though the techniques will be very different and specific to the models. From the safety and explainability point of view, it is expected that there will be standardization of languages and interfaces so that the deployment customization can be avoided. This can be done using either logical languages, constraint specification languages, or 
uh, our templates and uh, control natural languages with uh, well-defined formal semantics. Since the safety specifications act as constraints and hence additional requirements, uh, it is not unreasonable to provide classes of safety constraints through SLEs. Similar consideration can be given to expose different levels of explanations through SLEs. This will require extension to the SLA uh, languages. The last point I want to make is that in case of ML models supporting online updates, monitoring mechanisms should be in place to detect or predict violation of intents. Concept drift due to changing distribution of data or changing knowledge may result in different decisions by the models. And there may be business rules to curtail the model updates that can lead to unexpected changes to the model itself. These require uh, specifications about the models and about the different steps that uh, can be there in the model uh, lifecycle management process itself. Uh, to summarize, we saw the uh, importance of trustworthy AI due to different deployment scenarios, techniques that can address the challenges of safety and explainability, and some architectural requirements to implement and integrate uh, these techniques. We have not covered the many other dimensions of trustworthy AI. However, the overall framework should be applicable to address them similarly. Thank you very much for your attention. We can now take the questions.